Hi guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. Um, we are three weeks down. Which means we are 17 weeks out. Yep, getting there, getting there. Slowly but surely. <laughs> Been a good week for me. Um, I don't know about you, but I've had a really good week training. Mm -hmm. Obviously I had my op, so I was feeling really down last week because I wasn't training properly, but today, um, well this week in general, I've really managed to pick it up, so haven't been doing as heavy sessions, in fact all of my sessions have been really light, but they've all been um, really efficient. I've worked really hard, got a good sweat on, and yeah, I've been keeping it light but effective. So it's been a good week for me. What about you? Good, yeah. Um, yeah, mine's been good. I'm still doing the, I've been down to the gym like six days, it will be six days this week, so that's quite good for me. I was, yeah, competing on Wednesday and was down at the stables Tuesday night. Well, pretty much all day Tuesday sort of getting the horses ready so yeah those two days were pretty much out um, but they were you know riding pretty much all day so that's you know that's still good I was sore after so can't complain um, okay, we're doing myth busting today and um, we did say that last week so we had we've obviously spoken to some friends family everyone that, that does this and asked mm. them what their biggest sort of questions are in mm. the industry and so we're just going to go over a few of them and kind of break them down for you because a lot of the things that people said that isn't actually true so one of the biggest ones is you have to squat to get a big bum <laughs> guys this is not true this is definitely definitely not true so basically squats are a compound movement that means when you squat you're using all of your legs so you're using your quads your hamstrings your glutes um, your calves using your core massively using your core even using your arms to hold the bar using your back to keep yourself tense everything is engaged in a squat so yes it will work your glutes but if you're trying to focus on building your glutes you need to be doing glute isolation exercises mm -hmm. so um, cable pull throughs hip thrusts glute bridges kickbacks um, good mornings, things like that where it kind of focuses more on your glutes are going to be building your glutes a lot better than mm. squats. So when people say squat every day, the squat challenge, all of these squat things, yeah they're good, they will give you really nice shapely legs, but if your goal is to ultimately focus on building just your glutes, you need to do glute isolation exercises. Another big myth guys, um, people say do 100 crunches before mm. bed to get abs, or do, do 100 sit ups every night and you'll get abs. Not, not true. Number one, abs are massively made in the kitchen. Um, that is true. So your diet, the leaner you are, the more you'll see your abs. The other key thing that is really crucial to, to understand is that your abs are engaged most when you're upright. Um, so your abs are constantly working. Your, your core muscles are constantly working to keep you up, to keep you balanced. When you lie down and you start doing crunches, you're immediately taking away their sole purpose. To bring out your abs, after obviously you've taken care of the diet, to bring out your abs, you want to be doing things where your abs are most engaged, such as hanging leg raises, um, sit-ups on the decline bench, um, cable crunches where you're getting the full range of motion in, anything that you're not um, lying on the ground. Obviously, crunches will work lying on the ground, but there are ways that you can engage it so, so much more. Um, the amount of times I hear people say like you shouldn't eat carbs after 6 o'clock at night or 8 o'clock at night or whatever time at night, basically just no carbs in the evening. Um, well, it's, it's rubbish really. Um, I mean there was a study that looked at sort of um, like carb timing in a way and it actually showed that the people who ate more, they ate 80% of their carbs in the evening, they actually lost more weight than the people who ate most of their carbs throughout the day. Oh really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, that. I mean, they're not saying that you should eat, you know, you should save all your carbs for the evening, and that's not the thing to do at all. But it's basically just when I say that, like, you know, don't be too worried if you do need you know, need to eat your carbs in the evening. It basically works around when you train as well. So, mm. like for myself, I train early in the morning, so I will have the majority of my carbs in the morning just because that's when I'm training. A lot of people train in the evening, so of course you're going to want to have your carbs before bed. You're not going to want to restrict your carb intake then, because that's when you need the energy ultimately. There's no rule that says if you have a bite of pasta after 6pm you're going to get fat. That's not true. That's essentially what Alex is trying to say. Um, yeah, so basically you know, your body doesn't know whether you know, you're getting a carb in at like 3 o'clock or when you're sick of the walk. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. as long as you're getting it in, yeah. your body it's you know, not crucial what time it is. Sort of. Exactly. Things. Spot reduction. A lot of people mm. a lot of people ask me, I want to lose weight off my tummy. <laughs> or I want to, my arms, I want my arms to lose fat. Mm. Guys, you can't do this. Doing tricep extensions 
are not going to burn fat off your arms. Doing loads of sit-ups is not going to lose fat off your tummy. You cannot squat reduce fat. Your body will burn the fat where it wants to burn the fat. So you just need to persevere and um, you know that problem area, the fat will come off eventually. Yeah. You know, just keep your, you know, keep your diet you know, on track. Um, and be patient. Pay off. Yes. Be patient. Like that. Right, the next one we wanted to talk about was the protein window. Yes, um, also known as the anabolic window, which I'm sure, um, well, most of you have probably heard of. It's basically where the where people say that there's a certain amount of time that you should eat your protein after your workout, whereas research has shown that it's actually like several hours after your workout, so it really doesn't, you know, it's not that crucial to get your, you need to rush home and get your protein shake in. Like, if that's part of your routine and you find that easier, then do that. But it's not a big deal like it's more important you know the rest of the day like the, you know the other sort of 24 hours you've got to get your protein in throughout the day it's not like your muscles are going to turn around and say oh you know i didn't get my protein so i'm not going to grow now <laughs> like you know it just doesn't work like that i guess just off the back of that it's also important to remember that your body can only process so much protein mm. in one sitting anyway so as alex said it's important to make sure that you're routinely eating a good amount of protein throughout the day to mm. kind of fuel your body as opposed to you know, focusing it all around your workout because your body won't be able to digest all that mm. protein in one go. Um, okay, another really, really big myth. Women, this is for you. Lifting does not make you bulky, okay? We don't have as much testosterone as men, so our muscles won't grow like men's muscles will. If you train to get bulky, eventually your muscles will grow and you will get bigger, eventually. But that will take such a long time, and if that's not your aim, you're not going to get there. Mm. If you're doing a little bit of lifting here and there, you'll tone up really, really nicely. The women that you, you know, you probably see, like the ones who, you know, are really muscular, so like the physique sort of, you know, competitors there, you know, on steroids, you're not going to yeah. get like that just from, you know, picking up a few dumbbells. The final one um, that we wanted to discuss is just weight as an indicator. Weight is not the best indicator for how well you're doing. I am the exact same weight now as I was two years ago when I was 35% body fat. Don't look at the scales and you know don't get fixated with the number on the scales because mm. it's not a good indicator. Base things on um, your body fat percentage, on the measurements that you take with, with actual tape because those are going to be much more um, effective mm. indicators of how well you're doing. You've got to remember that muscle weighs a lot more than fat does. So if you're just going by what the scales are saying, you, you're probably going to get disheartened because as you build muscle, your um, muscle volume will go up, so your fat content goes down, but they kind of balance each other out. Mm. Um, so it's important to be aware of that. And as I said, don't get fixated on the weight. Yeah, I think another way as well of you see how well you're doing is um, you just by how your clothes fit. Yeah. Like, you know, you may wake up, you know, one week and your jeans are a bit... You know, loose around, you know, right around your waist, or you drop down a dress size, and that's 100%. always good to sort of. Um, that's always a good sign. I think that's us done. If um, you, um, if you have any more questions yes. or any more myths that you wanted us to talk about, we'll definitely address them in the next vlog. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, don't forget to hit subscribe, guys. Um, please remember to give us a follow on Instagram. We'll see you next week. <laughs>